You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Dare to Soar with your host, Dr. R.C. Dr. R.C. will empower, encourage, and strengthen you. She will help you to soar to your highest potential while instilling hope. Please welcome the host of Dare to Soar, Dr. R.C. Three months ago, no one knew that SARS-CoV-2 existed. But as we all take a breath and begin to reflect Back on the date of December 31st, 2019, and then a few months later when a confirming article was released on March 17th by Science Daily that stated the following. Chinese authorities alerted the World Health Organization, better known as WHO, of an outbreak of a novel strand of coronavirus causing severe illness, which was subsequently named SARS-CoV-2. As of February 20th, 2020, nearly 167,500 COVID-19 cases have been documented, although many more mild cases have likely gone undiagnosed. The virus has killed over 6,600 people. Shortly after the epidemic began, Chinese scientists sequenced the SARS-CoV and made the data available to researchers worldwide. Now, moving forward, into our current months, the, this virus has spread to almost every country, infecting at least 446,000 people that we know of, with many more whom we do not know of. It has crashed economics and broken healthcare systems, filled hospitals, and emptied public spaces. It has separated people from their workplaces and their friends. It has disrupted modern society on a scale that most living people have never, never witnessed. Soon, most everyone in the United States will know someone who has been infected like World War II or the 9-11 attacks. This pandemic has already imprinted itself upon the nation's psyche. Good morning, listeners, and welcome. We are coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am Dr. R.C., your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar. During this hour that each of you are tuned in, I'd like to just share a bit of information as each of you open up your minds to the new journey that we are all going through within our homes and in various educational settings. This morning, I'm going to be coming from the platform of sharing information about COVID-19 while continuing to highlight National Social Work Month and a bit more. Now, let's get to the conversation at hand by beginning with a few myths and facts about COVID-19. Myth, COVID-19 is only dangerous to people 65 and over. Let me just share, listeners, 14 to 21 percent of patients ages 20 to 20, 20 to 44 who get COVID-19 will get sick enough to require hospitalization. And let me share those numbers again, 14 to 21 percent. Then approximately 12 percent of COVID cases will require serious enough or be considered serious enough for hospitalization. And please, listeners, as I always share during broadcasts, take out your notebooks, because anything that I'm sharing with you, you can go back and do your own research for yourselves and be mindful of the information, especially, especially with this topic. 20% of those hospitalized were among patients 20 to 44. And let me share that again. 20% 
of those who have been hospitalized were among patients 20 to 44. Now, let's continue on with the myths and facts. Myth. As I've shared, please keep in mind that 65 age number is no longer. We have moved past that as we can take note across our nation and what's going on right now. Another myth, I need to stockpile as many groceries and supplies as I possibly can. No, as we've known and heard across the nation, grocery stores, along with other facilities that we're shopping in, are taking time to restock themselves. So just keep that in mind for each and every state that you're in, location that you're in. Take note of what's going on on your local news, as well as our national platforms that are going on as well. Fact, please only buy what your family needs for the week. It is important to remember that many families may be unable to buy a supply or food or water for weeks in advance. Why? Being that as we look at society or the world, I should say, because this is something that's going on all over the world, everyone does not have transportation or have a means to call someone for assistance, to transport them for places that they need to get. So that's why information such as this is being put out in this way for all of us to be conscientious as to what's taking place. And we know that we definitely, and I want to preface this, that we all want to take care of our families, our friends that are close to us, and those that are not even close to us. It's just about being considerate about everyone else that is going through this. Because right now, as we can take note, what's going on on social media is that it may be someone that you've never met, never had contact with, but when you hear their story or their journey, you couldn't do nothing but take all of those things into consideration and hope for the best for each and every individual that you're coming in contact with via social media or even on telephones that you're talking on in your homes. Consider demand has recently been exceptionally high especially for grocery stores, household cleaning items, as we are taking note of, and some healthcare products as well. Freight flows are not disrupted, but stores need time to restock, just as I just shared. They need the time to restock. And as we know, when we look across, we are seeing toiletry items, hand sanitizer, all of those cleaning products, just as I've just shared, it it's coming off the shelves so, so very quickly so we can't even keep up with them ourselves. And if we're feeling like that, the individuals that are trying to get those items back on the shelves are even more so feeling even more overwhelmed. Let's keep moving on. Myth. I heard that the government is mailing $1,000 checks. How do I sign up? Now, as we know, the U.S. government, and this is a fact, has just signed and passed a $2 trillion stimulus package in response to COVID-19. And more details for this information can be found at www.thehill.com. And let me share that website again, because this is compacted with some so much information that's vitally important to each and every one of us. I want everyone to get the information that's needed and pull it apart and take once again those notes that you need to be conscious about the information and be aware. That website again is www.thehill.com and that's information about the $2 trillion stimulus package in response to COVID-19 that has just passed. Let's continue on because I do have so much information that I'd like to share with you all. But before I get into it any deeper, I'm going to hold right here. It's time for a commercial break. Listeners, don't go away. I will be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 
15 years, has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Introducing betterhomeandgarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. Betterhomeandgarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, betterhomeandgarden.com. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back once again, listeners. We are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Dr. R.C. And you're listening to Dare to Soar. I'd like to give you the call-in number, which is 1-866-451-1451. As I speak with you this morning on the topic and share information about COVID-19 while continuing to highlight National Social Work Month and a bit more. Now, as I continue on, before I left for break, I was sharing information about myths and facts. I want to give you just a little bit more information about that also. But let me share this. Anyone who tells you that they can get the money now, as we know, we've heard a lot of scams about this. So listeners, please be conscious, conscientious, I should say, about information that you're receiving from individuals. The data is here Articles are being placed out on social media, on the internet, for you to take the time to look yourselves. And if you're not able to go and look for yourselves, speak with a close friend who has access to social media or the internet for articles. And I'm speaking about articles that are coming from like thehill.com, for example, that are coming from CNN, that are coming from the CDC. This is information that you need to have for yourself so you can be aware and stay and remain in the loop as to what's taking place. Now let's go on. It's important that you only trust information coming from official sources. Just as I said, another source is the Federal Trade Commission, which recently provided more information about the scams that I've just spoken about concerning COVID-19. And let me share that website with you. And I'm going to be placing websites on my uh, social media pages for you to have as well. That website is www.consumerftc.gov, and it concerns scams that are being uh, tried, for lack of a better term, right now concerning the COVID-19. Myth, you can protect yourself from COVID-19 by swallowing or gargling with bleach, taking um, an antecedent, which is something that uh, helps you with digestion or steroids, or using essential oils, salt water, ethanol, or other substances. That is a myth. The fact is, none of these recommendations protects you from getting COVID-19, and some of these practices may be even dangerous. The best way, and the best way to protect yourself from COVID-19 and other viruses include washing your hands. We constantly hear about this and washing them frequently, thoroughly, using soap and hot water, avoiding close contact with people who are sick, sneezing or coughing. Also, in addition, you can avoid spreading your own germs by coughing into your elbow, by cuffing your elbow, coughing into your elbow, or just simply staying at home if you are sick. 
We hear that constantly, stay at home, stay at home. And I understand right now, uh, there are so many oftentimes where we are all wishing, gosh, I need a break. I need to just stay at home for a day. But right now, since we have been mandated, so to speak, in various states, and counties as well to stay at home. It just seems like it's just so hard, but keep in mind listeners, it's all about safety. And I wanna say that again, it's all about safety. Now let's continue on. Myth, a mask will protect you from COVID-19. Now let me give you the fact part of that. Certain models of professional type fitting respirators can protect healthcare workers as they care for infected patients. The medical professionals will be fit tested first, as we know, because everything is happening so rapidly, so quickly. Every time you turn on the news, every time you turn on the radio, we receive, it seems like every second minute, we're receiving new and updated information. So definitely keep those things in mind for the general public with wearing lightweight disposable surgical masks is not recommended and it's not recommended because they don't fit securely or tightly. They may allow tiny infected droplets to get into the nose, mouth or eyes. And let me say that again, because it's not fitting tightly or securely, interchange of words, they may allow tiny infected droplets to get in there. And this is information that I have researched and gathered from food and safety census. So whatever information I'm sharing with you, I have taken the time to pull it together to look at the research as to what it's saying and deliver you to be able to regurgitate this information back to you in a way that you yourself can take the time to look at it as well. And as I said, once again, I will be sharing this information on my social media platforms as far as the links to where this information is coming from. Now, also people with a virus on their hands who touch their face under the mask might become infected. This is not something new. These are, this is information that we are hearing and coming out also from the CDC as far as how to care or properly care and things to be conscientious for also. People with respiratory illness can wear these masks to lessen the chance, lessen the chances of infecting others. Bear in mind that stockpiling up on masks makes fewer available for patients who are sick and as well as our health care providers who are doing, and let me say, across the world. I don't want to say across the state, one state to another. When I take the time to look at what's going on, it is across the world. So I just want to take a second right now. Allow me to just take a moment to give a huge, and I mean a huge shout out to all of the healthcare workers. I'd like to say from me to you, from each and every one of you, thank you. Along with letting all of you know that you truly, and I mean you truly are appreciated. Now let's continue to move on, listeners. Myth, I can get COVID-19 through food or food packaging. Now, let me give you the fact that's coming from CDC, FDA, USDA. Let me give you facts, CDC, FDA, and USDA are not aware of any reports at this time that suggest COVID-19 can be transmitted by food or food packaging. Current evidence shows the biggest risks is of transmission of COVID-19 is being around individuals who are symptomatic and to lesser extent infected, but not showing symptoms. Listeners, it is time now for another commercial break. Don't go away. I have a bit more to share. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. 
Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune in to Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline, and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Welcome, listeners. I have returned once again. And this is Dr. R.C., your host of Dare to Soar. You're listening from live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Listeners, before I go back into a few more myths and facts, I'd like to share with you that I am on eight social media platforms just to give you Half of those right now, Tune In Radio, Player FM, CastBox, and SoundCloud. And I'll share a bit more of them with you a little bit later. Now, as we continue on, I was sharing with you about the food packaging. So let me just share one last thing about that. Food businesses should be following employee health policies and health department recommendations to keep individuals at home. And this is not something new that... um, It's never been heard of because as time goes on and the more and more uh, identifiers that are being shared about COVID-19, this is something that industries, businesses have to take precaution of. And once again, I cannot say enough. It's all about safety, safety, safety. Now, let's continue to move on, listeners. A myth, a vaccine to cure COVID-19 is available. Now, the fact is there is no vaccine for the new uh, COVID right now. And I'm just going to say right now, it doesn't mean that the scientists are not working on it because as we know, they are working very diligently on finding a vaccine for it. Scientists have already begun working on one as we have been hearing, but developing a vaccine that is safe Once again, that is safe and effective in human beings will take many months. Now, I don't want any of us, and I'm speaking to myself as well, to get discouraged by any means in any way, because we know that as individuals are working, who are the professionals in this field, they are going to find a vaccine that's going to be safe and very much so workable for individuals who are in need. So I just want to put that out there because with everything going on, we have to find ways and identify ways to keep all of our spirits up because this is something that we have never, ever been through before. That is, you know, in so many ways, a new normal, not because of the COVID-19 itself, but I want to say and preface it because of what our families, friends, loved ones, all of those who we care about in general are going through or just the world as a whole. And as I said earlier, even if it's someone that you did not know previously, when you hear their stories or they're sharing their emotion with you, you can do nothing but feel compassion about what is occurring with them. Now, I want to shift gears here a bit, listeners, by talking about managing anxiety and stress. As we know, this can be or is uh, for lack of a better term or not lack of a better term. It is. Let's let's just call it just what it is. It is it can be stressful. You can get anxiety because once again, this is something new to all of us. So let's talk about that for a little bit. So. 
stress and coping with it, the outbreak of the COVID-19 disease, it, it may be stressful, as I've just said, and I can't say that enough. We know that fear and anxiety about the disease, it can, it can be actually very overwhelming and can cause strong emotions, not only just in adults, but children as well, because many of our children are all, none of our children are going to school right now. Our graduations have been canceled. Proms have been canceled. Our children that were in school going daily, our pre-K, kindergarten, elementary kids overall, their days have been disrupted as well. Not to mention work for numerous numbers of individuals. Coping with stress will make you or make people care about your community stronger. Just as I've been sharing throughout this broadcast, it could be someone that you have never, ever seen or heard their voice, but just them putting out what they're going through, you have a whole shift in dynamics. But keep in mind that everyone reacts differently to stressful situations, which we are clearly, clearly aware of. And if we're not, then here's the time to take a breath and take note of that. We are all built differently. So therefore, our responses and reactions are going to be different. But that's what makes each of us unique individuals. Individual responses to this outbreak or any other variations of a crisis, it may be contingent upon one's background or even their community that, communities that they live in. And that's something that's very real. We don't all go to the same homes each and every day. Everyone's lifestyle is not the same. And that's why when information is shared or stories are shared, once again, here's that compassion that's going to come in or that question mark with that light bulb that gives you that sense to say, I never thought about it that way, or I just never thought about that at all. Why? Because we have our own journeys that we're going through right now, and that's okay. But communication right now, it is actually phenomenal when you take a look at it as a whole. How, when you take the time to look at how everyone is connecting with each other, it's actually amazing just to see that. And hopefully relationships that are being built right now, they will be extended because this is something that none of us will ever, ever forget but talking about the journey that you've gone through throughout this, it's going to be something to talk about for many, many, many years to come. People may respond more strongly to the stress of a crisis. And what does that look like? Older people and people with chronic disease who are at a higher risk for COVID-19. Children and teens, people are helping with the response to COVID-19 like doctors and our other healthcare professionals and other first responders as well. People who have mental health conditions, including problems with substance abuse. When we think about mental health overall, this is certainly a heightened time. Dr. R.C., why do you say that? I'm so glad that you asked that question. When we think about coping skills that each of us have, naturally. But then when you have other concerns that are added to that and your daily routines are disrupted, it is important to be able to readjust. So supportive measures are definitely, definitely needed and required. I'm so, so, you know, I feel just so such joy when I see individuals who are going through mental health issues or concerns that are able to connect via social media, telemental health, for example. But I'm going to hold that for right now. Don't go away. I will be right back. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. 
With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomenon while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back, listeners. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Dr. R.C., your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar. This morning, listeners, I am sharing information with you about COVID-19 while continuing to highlight National Social Work Month and a bit more. Right before the break, I was sharing information about the responses and the stressors when it comes to individuals dealing with the COVID-19 outbreak. And one thing I just wanted to bring back into play is to say that when we're speaking about the mental health concerns of individuals, I share that it is important to be able to readjust. It is a different time. There is a difference in what we're dealing with right now. So that is something for concern. I Disney shared with you right before the break that when we are dealing with individuals who are struggling with mental health issues or concerns, they are able to utilize telemental health, which is absolutely beneficial to those individuals. Because we still, please keep in mind, we still want everyone to have the best quality of life as possible. And I want to say that again the best quality of life as possible. So if you are struggling or going through mental health issues of concern and your norm is to be able to reach out to your providers, it is important that you continue to do so through telemental health and look at those resources and opportunities that are being offered to you because it's all about sustainability. Because once this has passed and it is going to pass, We are all going to get through this. You will be able to have, once again, that face-to-face contact. But this telemental health is the next best thing to that. Reach out to organizations, proven organizations, your providers that you're already connected with. And I want to say that clearly. Your providers that you're already connected with. Stay connected with them to provide the services that you definitely need. Now let's continue on. I want to talk a little bit about stress during an infectious disease outbreak. As we know, it it can be stress is stressful. And and I'm, I'm giving a double norm there, a double wording there, but let me just give a few pointers or points on that. Oftentimes we can experience fear or worry about your own health because you're, we, this is something that we are not familiar with. It is unknown to all of us. And that is a concern. And it's not just a concern for ourselves. It's a concern for our loved ones, families, and friends also. It changes your sleeping and eating patterns. It has no choice but to do that. Simply because you're in quarters that you normally go in and out of each day. But now you're here. You're there in that space daily without much movement at all. If any at all. Worsening of chronic health problems. And this can occur 
because you may not be able to get to your medications that you need to. So that's why resources are being offered. And once again, I defer to your healthcare providers, your medical providers, your doctor's offices, your social media platforms that are now providing information that when you are able to legitimately order the medications that you need from pharmacies. The increase of alcohol or tobacco or other drug use, just like I was speaking of earlier, these are things or stressors that can be brought on by this. So things and points to be conscientious of, but still looking at those viable, credible, and let me say that again, viable, credible resources, because as we know, things can turn and we can have individuals putting information out that is not the most beneficial to any of us. And I'm speaking as a whole because we are all a part of this and in this together. And we have to be very conscientious of which direction we are going in. Now, things you can do to support yourself. Take breaks from watching or reading or listening to news stories, including social media. Sometimes it can just be an overwhelming overload. That's just like if you are on a computer and, you know, things just kind of fry out, so to speak. You need to step back from it from time to time. Shift gears, just like if you were driving a five-speed car and it tells you to shift those gears, shift the gears. It's okay to shift the gears. Take that break. Sometimes you need to step away and then come back to something to re-energize yourselves. Hearing about the pandemic repeatedly can only be upsetting, as we know that just as I'm saying right now and sharing with each of you, that reset button is so, so vitally important. Take care of your body. Take deep breaths, stretch. All of these things are absolutely wonderful to do, and we all have to practice them now. Try to eat healthy. And I know this can be very hard because we're just getting in, you know, the very early stages of this for some. And our brains are telling us to do one thing, even though we're trying to fight against it. But we are going to all work this together. Try to eat healthy. Balance your meals. Exercise as much as you possibly can. And try to get plenty of sleep. And I know this may be hard for some. So we're just going to take it one step at a time. And I keep saying we're, we, because we're all in this together. And the more information that we share with one another about what works, what didn't work for you, it helps someone else, believe it or not. Because what you're going through, someone else may have very well been going through it, but just didn't know whom to ask or the right questions to ask. So it's okay to share information with individuals. Make time to unwind. Try to do different activities, whether it's watching a movie, uh, a new book that you've ordered. These are just examples of what you can do. Connect with others, as I've been talking about the entire time. Social media is a platform that has really, really, you know, we talk about social media can be good and not so good at times. But when we look at all of the positive things that people are sharing, and I'm not going to go to the negative things because that's just how society is. But we're going to talk about those positive things that are being shared, those stories, information that's being shared, and techniques that are working, different things that people are trying that's working for them as well as their families and their children, because that is so vitally important. Now parents are having to be teachers, and I am more than sure that that in itself is a journey. So keep in mind of those things. Listeners, it is time for another break. Don't go away. We will be right back. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, 
passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit wikiwags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit mywikiwags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Listeners, we're here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Dare to Soar, and I am your host, Dr. R.C. Now, before we get back into it, two things I want to share. That call-in number, which is 1-866-451-1451. And then additionally, I share that I am on eight social media platforms, and I want to give you the other four right now. iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. So as I get back into the stressors that I was sharing with you concerning the COVID-19, I want to share this. Call your healthcare provider if stress gets in the way of your daily activity or activities for several days in a row. Let me say that again. Self-care is so, so vitally important and even more so now because you We do not have opportunities to go out and move about like we normally would do. Call your health care provider if stress gets in the way of your daily activities for several days in a row. Reduce stress in yourself and others as much as you possibly can. I've already shared with you about sharing information with one another, just having that dialogue. That's one way to decrease your stress. It definitely does help. Now for my parents, I realized that this is a new normal and it can be just a little bit overwhelming. And I, I, I'm, I get that. I, I understand that we all know that, especially our teachers who have been doing this each and every day for a number of years with students. And I'm prefacing that because it is definitely a new normal for parents. Children and teens, as we know, are going to have different reactions in parts or what they see from their adults or around them. When parents and caregivers deal with the COVID-19 calmly and confidently, they can provide the best support for their children. And I know that's easier said than done. But once again, call upon your neighbors and your neighbor does not have to be the person that lives right next door to you. You have so much information on social media, educational platforms that are sharing tips as to how to get through different experiences. You have the platforms like your Google platforms that uh, te- Google classrooms that teachers are utilizing and additional platforms that they are utilizing as well to assist with the process that you're going through. They're allowing that face to face with the teacher setting up a classroom and in some instances where you can see your whole class there, which is really neat because it still gives kids that sense of being right there. And when you're not, you still have that voice of your teachers or your instructors right there on platforms. And I'm just not speaking about our uh, K through 12. I'm also talking about our college levels as well, because distant learning right now is where we are. 
parents can be more reassuring to others around them, especially children, if they are better prepared. And here is the preparation, just like I just shared. Now, as we know, not all teens, children and teens are going to respond to stress in the same way. Some common changes to be mindful are excessive crying or irritation in younger children, returning to behaviors that they have outgrown. For example, um, toileting accidents or bedwetting, excessive worrying or sadness, irritability, acting out behaviors in teens, poor school performance or avoiding doing their assignments. Or they're beginning to enjoy activities that they've enjoyed. You know, that social media for our kids has been a big, big thing. And right now, that's a new way that they're communicating. And when I say new way, we know that our students are always, always on social media. But you may notice that they're, it's ramped up, so to speak, now. So that's their outlet, but still be mindful. And I want to preface this. We still have to be mindful of that social media piece because as I was speaking with uh, someone that I work very closely with, we still have to be mindful of many things that are not so positive that go on on social media. What is that? That is when we talk about human trafficking. Now I'm putting this out there because this is real. This is a reality. And we know that platforms out there where predators, this where they sit and they watch and they monitor. So parents, guardians, just be mindful. And I just want to say, just be mindful of that because it is a reality. Now, there are many things you can do to support your child talking to them. Take time to talk with your child or your teen about COVID-19 outbreaks. Some may or may not understand what it is. Share information. Have that dialogue with them. If they have questions, answer those questions, as well as direct them to where they can obtain more concrete, factual information. Not the misnomers that are out there, but we want them to have solid information. Reassure your child or your teen that they are safe. Let them know it's okay to feel upset. It's human response. It's human nature. Share with them how you deal with your own stress so they can learn how to cope from you in positive ways. We're human. Limit your family's exposure to the news and the coverage. Sometimes, just as I said, it can be very overwhelming at times, and we have to just be conscientious of that. Taking a step back, stepping away. Try to keep up with a regular routine as much as possible, as much as possible. We know right now that schools are closed, so we have to be very creative with everything that we do, everything that we do. I was watching social media and I saw a dad, which I just thought that it was just wonderful. His daughter was a cheerleader and they did a whole cheer routine and shared it on social media. The mom taped it. That's something different, but it's still something interactive once you step away from the schoolwork and what's going on on television, just to give an outlet. And that's just one example of what's going on. I've even taken notice of on social media where some of our students are in band. So what the school did was they had all of the individuals that were members of the band and they put it on social media. So as though they were actually in their class in band. Now, yes, band was a class for them, but think about how fun it was to be able to, one, be able to interact with your friends that you hadn't seen for a little while, and then two, do something that you really enjoy doing. And then to share it with a whole lot of other people too. Wonderful. And always be a role model. That That's something that we can all do for our children. Listeners, it's time for another break. Don't go away. I will be right back. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 
Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Listeners, I am Dr. R.C., your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar, live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This morning, I am and have been sharing information about COVID-19 while continuing to highlight National Social Work Month and more, which I have not forgotten about my colleagues, social workers across the world. I just want to put that out there so it is coming up. Just hold tight. Now, as we get back to the topic at hand, the first part of the topic, I have a message for our responders. Responding to the COVID-19, it can take an emotional toll on you, and which is true. There are things you can do to reduce secondary traumatic stress, STS. Acknowledge that STS can impact anyone helping families after a traumatic event. And this is a traumatic event that is occurring. Learn the system, symptoms, including physical fatigue or illness, fear, withdrawal, guilt. And it's human nature. We are all human. We're going to go through highs and lows, ups and downs. As responders, I am a responder myself being a school social worker, along with my colleagues across the world. We have our health care providers, our police officers, and I can go on and on for those who are responding. Take a break from media coverage, and I can't say that enough. Ask for help if you feel overwhelmed or concerned. Once again, step away, then reset, go back. Create a menu of personal self-care activities that you, that you enjoy. It is okay to be a little bit selfish at times, because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. So that's important. Spend time with friends. Now we know that we cannot, or we should not being, should not have that physical contact in that manner. So we are all being cautious and careful aside from the individuals that you live in the home with. So having those conversations, it still works. Take a break once again from that social media. I just can't say that enough. And I keep repeating that because there is so much information. And as I said, it comes out so rapidly, so fast, so quickly. 
as to what's occurring because things change in your various states that you're in so, so quickly. That is so, so important. Now, listeners, as I continue on and as I stated, I wanted to also recognize and highlight National Social Work Month. The month of March is National Social Work Month. So as I get ready to close out for this morning, I want to say with the rapid changes to the way we communicate, work, live, and support one another during during COVID-19 outbreak, the time has come for us as social workers to activate the social work movement that should be identified as and by the hashtag and this is why. We're showcasing the work that we are doing and each and every corner of the world. And it is a lot. I've been taking note of so much that's been going on. Post your pictures, tag me in your pictures so I can repost them and share also. Social workers across the world, I'm calling upon each of you to share your stories on how you are mobilizing within your communities. We are change agents. Don't forget that. We are change agents who empower, encourage, build self-esteem, confidence, as well as instill hope in those who may be facing various mental health issues, no matter what state or country they are in. As social workers, we are here to let all know that we are not in this unique and highly skilled profession by chance, because we're not. We are here because we are called to do so. And I want you all to remember, remember that. Please remember that, that this is a profession that you are definitely called to do so. You're not here by chance. And I want you to repeat that to yourselves and also repeat that you are a change agent. And then once again, that hashtag is, and this is why. Think about and reflect and take time as to why you got in this profession and what you love about it. Share your stories, share what you're doing, because you all are doing so many, many wonderful things. And before I close out this morning, I want to leave you with this. I am the evidence for how belief inspires hope, transforms, and how giving heals the soul. I'm the evidence for what we can achieve, how feeling connected can ground, how there is invaluable worth in the act of faith. I'm the evidence of how an example can lead, how far encouragement can take you, and how one step begins a journey towards endless possibilities. Listeners, I so appreciate each and every one of you tuning in this morning. Have a fantastic week, and I'll talk to you next week. This has been Dare to Soar with your host, Dr. R.C. Come take a ride and soar to your highest level possible each week on Dr. R.C.'s Dare to Soar. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 